Excellent. What a phenomenal talk, Dr. Matthew. Thank you so much. And I think you really nailed everything, kind of put it all together. That, that communication piece is so important between the partners and also between the health providers and the patient back and forth. That communication, the only way you're going to find solutions is by talking about it. And we had a number of really excellent questions come in, and I will try to get through as many of them as I can. So um, the first question that we have, taking them in order, do you have any advice on what to do if the scrotum and penis remain somewhat swollen from lymphedema? Yeah, so just a reminder, and it's important that I am a psychologist, um, so it's cha more challenging for me to uh, answer the medical questions, and so I'll answer them um, not necessarily from a, well, certainly not from a physician's perspective, but from experience perspective is that uh, that can be very uncomfortable, obviously, and usually the edema goes down over time, so I'm not clear how long this has been going on, but it is definitely worthwhile to talk to your uro-oncologist or your urologist um, to find out mm -hmm. further about this edema and the expectation that um, it'll go down, and the idea of being patient, because um, it is uncomfortable. So reduce your expectations that you're going to engage in sexual activity merely because of the discomfort and, and hopefully that will improve. Okay, good. So again, great advice. Go back to your healthcare provider because they would be the ones that would be able to provide other sources of relief in that sense. So I think that that's very helpful. So here's somebody who can't take Viagra or other meds because of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, other than injections, are there any other interesting safe methods on the horizon that you would know about? I know you mentioned so many. Yeah, not that I know of, unfortunately. You know, the um, uh, the latest, as you know, big change were the PD-5 inhibitors, and, and I'm sorry to hear that um, um, that's not available. Uh, hopefully, you've talked to your cardiologist uh, specifically about it because they actually know more about it than, for instance, urologists. So it's worthwhile to go back, um, but alt uh, but uh, certainly be safe. The benefit of, of Muse, that's at microsuppository, or the injections is they're localized agents. So they only work um, in the penile tissue, and hence they're not problematic under most uh, under the situations of cardiovascular morbidity. And so that's why you're probably available to do it. Um, people, so a couple things. One is uh, uh, when you're thinking about ejections, if you've not tried them, as I said, the bark is far worse than the bite. And it doesn't also mean that you have to use it every time. And I think that's super important too, because no one wants to think that every time that they're going to engage in sexual activity, they're going to use an injection. But lots of couples will say, you know, it's nice just to have it there once a month or once in a while just to get back um, uh, from erection. So uh, if you haven't tried it, um, uh, talk, to your, um, talk to your healthcare group and, and, and see if you can even um, go and get training in a, in a clinic on, on how to do it and how to do it successfully. The other idea is Muse, that's that microsuppository. Yes, it's less uh, successful, but that doesn't mean it's not successful. And the idea if used properly, and in other words, if you put it in and you massage your penis with your penis paint, uh, pointing up towards the sky and there's full absorption, uh, it can also be helpful. And then finally, the pump. Um, and uh, the pump, you know, probably has a bad rap from uh, Austin Powers, you know, when they pull, when he pulls it out of his box uh, as a item in, when he was in prison or something. Uh, but the idea is that they also uh, can be uh, helpful and useful and there's not, uh, and you get better at it. So don't under, don't, don't under, or, or if you're trying the pump and putting mm -hmm. the ring on and it's uncomfortable at first or whatever, you can learn different um, ring sizes. There are videos on YouTube that can help. Um, so those are, those would be my recommendations. But unfortunately, I'm not aware of anything like a top cream or anything along those lines that will be effective enough given the degree of erectile dysfunction associated with this treatment. Right, right. And, you know, you mentioned one thing when you were talking about uh, the injection, you were talking about it's like an, a vaccine 
And I know that you know, it really is a very tiny, very fine needle. I think that's important to stress because a lot of people are seeing the videos of people getting their COVID-19 vaccine. And I personally think that's a really big needle. And so it's not like a vaccine needle at all, really, in most vaccines. It's a very tiny, almost like a, isn't it more like a diabetic needle? That's so right. So it's very not going to have the same impact. Okay. Very small gauge. And, yeah. you know, okay. Um, are there unique? The, well, I was just going to say the overwhelming, uh, you know, uh, sensitive area of the penis is the head of the penis, not the shaft of the penis. And of course, you never would inject in the head of the penis. You inject near the lower bottom portion of, of the shaft of the penis. Uh, and uh, and as I said, people uh, immediately kind of step back a little bit. But those that have tried it do state that its uh, its bark was worse than its bite. It's just not that challenging. Um, to do and the, they feel confident because it is a very effective approach. Mm -hmm. And it works relatively quickly too. It's not that you have to wait a long period of time for it to take effect either, correct? Absolutely, and, and, and the idea is that, it, as I said, it takes you know no more than 15 minutes. And what can actually occur is that uh, uh, you can you can have uh, there are varying forms of it so you can have it in a powder form and then you mix it with fluid to make the medication um, at the time of need and so you can travel with it other times there it's already in liquid form and uh, and uh, it does need to be refrigerated but the idea is that uh, you engage in sexual you know if you engage in some foreplay and um, you decide that you want to move towards penetrative sex it takes a very short period of time to load the needle. You're taught how to do so. You're taught how to dose respond. And then you inject yourself. Then you can uh, roll back over in bed or on top of the kitchen sink or wherever you happen to be and fool around, uh, engage in that um, uh, foreplay again. And during that time, um, your erection will form. Mm -hmm. So, um... I'll just jump to one more question because we are coming towards the end of the hour and I just want to be aware of everybody's time. I know you might have a cutoff. So um, I know that sooner is better, but is there a point after which treatment is no longer effective for sexual really dysfunction post bladder take cancer treatment? To answer that question. So we, I'm less concerned about the time. Um, if you guys are willing to stand very mm -hmm. okay. question to, the notion of penile rehabilitation yeah. and um and that is the, the the was use it or lose it so the idea of uh, engage in an early um uh pro rectile therapy uh in order to uh for greater likelihood of return of function later on and uh try as we might um and although that sounds like a great approach the research hasn't really bore that out all right. It doesn't mean that it's not a very good idea to engage in sexual activity sooner rather than later because um, you don't want a disruption to go on for so long. So, and the other is that it's nice. It's probably good to get blood flow to the penis to get oxygen and nutrients to the penile tissue, and that keeps it healthy. Um, that said, uh, this early use of, of, of say PD and five inhibitors uh, have been tested. Um, the idea is that if we do that, then we'll have better natural function uh, a year or two away. Uh, and unfortunately, the research hasn't bore that out. That said, um, we do know these PD5 inhibitors and, and pro agents are useful. So doing nothing, um, you're gonna have less of a chance of, of getting erectile functioning. So going back to the idea of, you know, is there past a time when you shouldn't try it? Uh, I would suggest not except for the um, idea that if you haven't had an erection for a very long period of time, the health of your tissue may be compromised. But that said, I don't want to assume that. And I think you should go see your urologist and, and give it a try. There's no harm in giving it a try. Um, so don't be feel uh, fearful that I didn't try it earlier and I should have and now I've blown it. It's just not true. Okay, that's good advice. Thank you. Uh, another good question. Since neither urine nor ejaculate travels through the penis after a urinary diversion is in place after prostate after sister prostatectomy, 
does the urethra close up to where suppositories can't be used since it's not being used for anything else? That's a good question. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm not experienced enough in the use of Amuse under those circumstances to know that because my clinic runs for the first uh, two years, uh, for within two years of treatment. So there's still uh, the likelihood of the closing of the urethra during that time is, is, is less so. Uh, I know that the Muse applications or the applications of the microsuppositories are thin, um, but I also wouldn't want you to do any damage. So if you feel like the urethra is closed and not allowing for um, the applicator, uh, then definitely just talk to your urologist to confirm and make sure that you don't do any damage if you're going to try these. Great. I know that there are quite a few other questions that are actually really very specific to things that people should speak to their doctors about. I think that that's really important. So I don't want to take up too much more of your time on this. I do want to thank you. I think this was an excellent program. I do want to remind everybody that we are going to be posting this online. You will get a link to the recording so you may watch the whole program again, and we'll have a transcript made as well. And again, go back to your physicians with any specific medical concerns that you may have. There were some that were very unique questions on here in terms of um, you know, urine that flows instead of ejaculate and some other issues. But I think those are really more questions for the urologist than for Dr. Matthews, I believe. So I'd like to thank everybody again for joining. Please be sure that you complete the survey. We'd like to thank Bristol Myers Squibb, EMD Serona Pfizer Partnership, Fairgene, Genentech, Merck, and Urogen for their support of the Patient Insight webinar series. And Dr. Matthews, thank you so much. We look forward to working with you further in the future. And we really appreciate your taking time out of your day to do this program. Uh, well, thank you very much. I very much enjoyed it. And uh, just as you were saying, uh, hopefully um, the, the talk provided you with uh, a background and education to, uh, because often people don't know what they don't know. If you get some uh, uh, critical level of education, that means you can sp speak more clearly to your, your, your healthcare practitioner team um, about your concerns. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. And again, remember that when you're having sex, it has a voice as well, and you all need to communicate. It's really important, even though it can be very hard after treatment for a disease like bladder cancer, but it is important to keep that line of communication open. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the program. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.